Hey guys, got a special video for you today. We are gonna explain how you go from purchasing a water maker to drinking fresh water that you pulled out of the ocean. You may or may not know me, but my name is James. My girlfriend Kim and I have been sailing around the world for the last three years, and we've been schlepping water that whole time in jerry cans. It's worked so far, but now that we've seen a lot of the Caribbean, Central, and South America, we'd really like to go across the Pacific to a little bit more remote places on Earth. Easter Island, Pitcairn, Austral Islands, and a lot of those places they just catch rainwater and so the locals even don't have a lot so we contacted spectra water makers to see if they were interested in a sponsorship and that's what this video is so i think it's important to know that this is a sponsored video i appreciate it when uh, people are forthright and tell me when i'm watching sponsored content now that said spectra didn't contact us we contacted them for the simple reason that they have the most efficient water maker on the market. And also after researching the company and the parent company, they really are a wonderful company to work with. So one of the really cool things about this is we even got a factory tour. We got to meet all the guys. We asked them some questions that you guys sent in from a live stream we did about this, but that's gonna be for a later video. Now we're gonna talk about installation, how the pump works, how to wire it and how to operate it. So this being an installation and information video, it's gonna be a little dry for some of you. If you want some more entertaining content, click up here and I will link in our videos to the adventures. Entertaining is every, any time that I'm in the video, right? That's right, yeah. But if you're like me and you like the techie stuff and you really wanna get a good understanding on what's involved, then stick around, watch the whole video. It's, it'll be interesting for you. All right, let's start with the heart, the Clark intensifier pump. The cool thing about this pump is it doesn't run on power. It only runs on water. I'll say that again, it does not run on electricity. It runs on water. The only piece of gear in this entire system that draws any real current is a vein driven Sureflow pump, really similar to this. This is my spare for my pressurized water. Sureflow made, makes a special one for Spectra with heat sinks on the outside and a fan on the top because this pump needs to run for hours and hours on end. And usually these pumps are only on for 30 seconds or so just to pressurize your water system on your boat. So this is the piece of gear that runs on electricity that draws all the amperage. This draws no amperage and just runs on the water pressure from this. Now, how does it work? I don't think I've ever told you guys this, but I was a water jet technician for four years and the technologies are very similar. In water jet, you take a piston with two plungers on either side and apply hydraulic pressure to the piston and the ratio of the diameter of the piston to the diameter of the plunger increases the pressure of the output water by, by that amount. Now, the technology is similar. It's not exactly the same, but you've got a piston and plunger set up in here driven by water instead of hydraulic pressure because the pressures are much lower. In when water jet, you're, you're dealing with 80,000, 90,000 PSI. With this, you're dealing with 600 to 1,000 PSI. So it can be run by just water. You've got a diversion valve up here so when the piston reaches the end, the diversion valve can shift and divert the water to the other side and start pushing it the other direction. The inlet water comes in here, goes through the intensifier pump, and comes out here on the bottom. From there, it goes into the membrane and about 10% of that water turns into product water or fresh water that comes out the top of the membrane. The rest of that water is flushed out. Now, the really cool thing about this pump is the power recovery system. Instead of just discharging that 90% waste water that's already been pressurized up to 700 PSI, it diverts a lot of it back into the system and minimize the amount that this guy needs to work to put pressurized water into this thing. Now, what makes the connect pump different than the regular pump is what happens after the product water comes out of the pump. Normally you get salty water for the first few minutes of running it. It's just the way it works. The system is salty. It takes a little while for it to get up to pressure and you don't want that salty water to taint your tank. So what you do is you disconnect the tank hose and run it into a bucket and just taste it every couple minutes until you can't taste it anymore. Plug it back into your hose and Bob's your uncle. Well, with this system, it's actually got an automatic valve and a TDS meter inside here that takes care of that for you. So you have a solenoid operated diversion valve where the fresh water comes into here, goes through a flow meter, goes into this block, and in this block is a, a salinity probe that's probing for how much salt is in the water. 
as soon as it gets down below a thousand TDS where you can't taste it anymore, the diversion valve opens up and sends the good fresh water to the tank. If the TDS stays over a thousand, the diversion valve stays shut and diverts the water through a one-way check valve and out. So if you need to do any service, you can just disconnect the hardline hose and hook up a service hose. So if you need to clean the system, you need to pickle the system, it's, that's really easy. So let's put it in the boat. Okay, it's really important that you study the layout, try to comprehend how everything is supposed to go together, then lay it all out in your boat or wherever you're gonna mount it and make sure all the cables are gonna fit. They can be extended if you have to, but it's a lot easier if you just put it in a location where it'll all fit together. The through hole location is important, as is possible contamination and future water leaking onto sensitive equipment, so choose accordingly and read the manual. The Clark pump itself can be mounted in any position, including upside down. So if you feel the need to do some acrobatics in the engine room, be my guest. The only thing is the temperature needs not to exceed 45 degrees Celsius. And remember to over drill and epoxy pot any hardware going through the deck or hull. That's just prudent boatmanship. So the installation's almost complete and I need some wire because I have two meters of 10 gauge marine wire and I have like 20 meters of, of 12 gauge but the book calls for 10 gauge so we're gonna go buy some 10 gauge wire. Half the fun of doing Projects like these in other countries is trying to figure out where to go to get it. Uh, like this cable, I just got a Cat5 cable made for me for a dollar. This thing would have been at least five bucks in the States, probably more like 15, if you can find the right, the right size. He's just like, yeah, how much you need? Made it right there, boom, one buck. So hopefully we'll get that deal with the, uh, with the wire. Let's go and see. Want to come to the Ferreteria with us? That's hardware store in Spanish. Este es dos de dos de dos. Estás haciendo dos de diez. Dos de diez margarita. So this is a marine, but uh, they do have one cable with two strands of of twelve gauge. We'll see if they have ten. Okay, amarillo y, y azul. Uh, no, no, uh, blanco. Por favor, dos metros de dos. Oh, tienes tienes ah oh, negro es mejor. Muchas gracias. Y y, y blanco. Negro y blanco, por favor. And then this is our circuit breaker. And it's not a pretty one, but uh, it's like a house circuit breaker. It's, it'll work. It's still a circuit breaker. It's just not like the boat circuit breaker. So this will look really funny. I'm going to try to hide this somewhere. All right, now we're going to talk about the installation process. This may seem daunting, but it's not that hard. It took me about 16 hours to do that entire thing. That's in from unboxing to making water. And that's including sourcing the parts I needed, which were the wiring and the extra tubing. So I'm gonna separate the plumbing and the electrical and we're gonna go through it quick, dirty, and thorough. All right, so this is my through hole. It comes out of the through hole, goes up this black line, and goes to here. Now I didn't have a dedicated through hole, so what I did was I put a T and I put a restriction valve up here after the T. So that restriction valve is now gonna cut off my engine. This, this strainer goes to my engine, and this black line goes to my engine feed pump, the raw water pump for my engine cooling, okay? So I don't want that, that to get any, any kind of uh, debris or chemicals or anything like that into this line, so I put a, a valve here. So now it'll just suck directly from the seawater out into my strainer. And just to keep in mind, they, they recommend that you have a de dedicated through hole and I will put one in, but this is just temporary until I can put one in. So now we're gonna go up this line from the T to a strainer and then to the feed pump. This filter is not for the seawater. This filter is a charcoal filter for the freshwater flush. It's to take any chlorine out of the freshwater in your tanks as the chlorine will damage the membrane. So this line is run from my water system from the tank, goes into here, and then you have a, a shifting valve here. This will allow the feed pump to suck from the freshwater tanks in your boat when you're freshwater flushing after every use and also from the seawater when you want to run the desalinator. Now as we discussed before, the pump is special because it has heat sinks. 
These are heat sinks, see? When you see that on there, that's to dissipate heat. And then it's also got a fan to dissipate heat. And this is a SureFlow pump. Now the plumbing that comes off of there, once it comes out of the pump, comes in this direction, comes out this direction, goes up here, and goes over to these two filters. The first one is a 20 micron filter, the second one is a five micron filter. They've got sensors on the top. You can see the sensors. And then it comes out, goes down into an accumulator, and the accumulator has a gauge on it so you can see analog what your feed pressure is. And for my pump, it's about 60 PSI. And then it comes out of the accumulator, comes down, and goes to the pump. All right, and that's the feed for the pump. And then like I said, when we were explaining the pump, this is the discharge, which comes up and goes through a through hole back here. And then the product water goes through this diversion valve and either gets pumped overboard through there, or once it's got the right TDS, it starts going through this to my tank. And the way that I, that I hooked it up, I've got it coming out here. That's the product water comes out there, goes around my fuel tank, then comes out here to this three-way valve, and I can either have it going to, to the tank, that's to tank, and this is coming out here, and I can, fill, I can fill a bucket with this, just so I can test it. This was supplied by Spectra. Okay, so that's the plumbing, that's it. So now let's talk about the wiring. The cool part about the wiring for this system, all the connectors are different sizes and shapes, and you can't mess it up, even a monkey can't mess it up, which is good, because I'm definitely a grease monkey. So, uh, they even supplied a modem, and I can control this thing with my computer and my phone. Okay, as far as the wiring goes, we're gonna start from my battery. Now, this is my engine, the engine's powered by my battery's terminals. These are connected directly to my, my battery terminals. That's the hot one, that's the well, cold one, or neutral one, or ground, that's what it's called. All right, so we've got the hot connected to a white wire and the ground connected to a black. It goes up here and it goes through the bulkhead and that's my 15 amp circuit breaker. I had to use a house circuit breaker because I couldn't get a boat one. And I'll get a boat one eventually, but that's just on the, on the hot wire. The hot wire goes up here, it's got a circuit breaker here and it goes through. And then after it goes around, it comes out here and it goes to this. This is the Spectra supplied cover for the terminal block. It's just a, it's just a block with a couple screws in there. And then it comes into here and goes up and powers the brain. And that's the brain box, okay? So the brain box controls all of the, the automatic functions of the water maker. It's got connections for the network cable. This is for the router, this is the router. So this is the cable that comes from the router. This is the only other cable I had to have made. This is for the salinity meter that comes from the pump. This one gets routed over here, it comes from here. This is the salinity meter. It goes up right underneath this block. There's a salinity meter. So that cable, this cable comes down and around, and goes up over and comes to here, okay? So that's the network cable. This is the salinity cable and the blue one is the display cable. And that one is all the way routed through, routed through, routed through the boat, and routed over to my display. And that one comes with a 50 foot cable. Way too long for my needs, but I just rolled the rest up and shoved it behind the tank so you'll never see it. So this one has an auto and manual run feature. So right as I'm filming this, there's a bunch of kids that got on the boat. I told them, you know, this is my house. You're welcome, but uh, you gotta ask permission before coming up on the boat, because they just all came up on the boat. And uh, that's kind of a culture difference thing, but I, I like to allow people to come on, but tell them to be respectful. Hola. Hola. Como estas? Bien. De donde eres? Aquí, Ecuador. Ecuador. Puerto López. Puerto López. All right. ¿Te gusta mi barco? Sí, uh, muy hermoso. Yeah, gracias. Fishing for compliments. Baby. Y uh, pescadores. Yes. Todos los pescadores en, en Puerto López, ¿no? 
¿Y cuántos años? Oh, dos. 15, 12, 15, 14. All right. Well, bienvenidos a mi barco, hermano. Gracias, igual. <laughs> they were cute. Okay, back to work. Yeah, what the hell? What am I paying you for? Where were we? Okay, we're at the brain. So, I've already told you what all the network cables do coming out the top of the brain. Uh, this is the router. And then we have the power coming into the brain, but what do all these other cables do? Some of them I'm not using because I don't have tank level switches. So this is the tank level switching block. And because I have bladder type tanks, I can't have tank level switches. So I'm not using those. But normally if you want tank level switches, you can just drill those into the top and bottom of your tank and they're little float switches and then wire them into here. So the only other cables coming out of this guy are this with the green is the Z-ion control. The Z-ion is a system that replaces the charcoal filter and introduces a stream of metallic ions that kill all the organisms in your water maker for up to 30 days. But I don't have that option, so we're just gonna leave this out. So we're gonna leave this one out, and we're gonna leave this one out, the tank level indicators. So what's left is this is the power, power cable for the feed pump, big gauge cable. That's for this. That draws nine amps on a 12 volt system. So you need pretty, pretty big cables for that. And then this connector, this connector is for the Clark pump. So it goes down, around, up, all the way over my filters and to the pump. And that's for the TDS probe and the flow meter and the diversion valve power. So there should be five wires in there. Yeah, there's five wires. And the only other one is the black one coming down here. And I've routed that down and it goes right back up. And that is for the sensors on the top of these filters. So the brain can tell automatically by pressure differential when the filters need to be changed and what the life is left on the filter. Okay, so final thoughts on wiring. Super, super simple. The only wiring you actually have to do yourself is the two black and white wires for the power coming into the brain. Other than that, everything is already pre-wired. All you do is run and connect. I sweat a lot through this install. <laughs> just because it's in the engine room and there's not a lot of airflow in here and it's, whew. I can just imagine on a monohull boat. Look how much room I have. If you were working upside down in a lazaret, I'm sure people have had a, a way harder time than me putting these in. But overall, fairly simple, fairly straightforward, not a big deal. Uh, like I said, about 16 hours, okay? Sweating, but fairly easy. Next stop, operation. So I don't know if you guys are the same as me, but when I finish something that takes me two days of hard work, I reward myself with cookies. Just like a dog, human beings can also have a Pavlovian response. In fact, I'm salivating right now. Just thinking of this. Oh. Oh. Here's to hooking up a water maker. You want one? Okay. New system, flip on the breaker, and this comes up. Spectra water maker is the most simple, energy efficient, and quiet water maker in the world. Isn't that nice? With the sunset. So that's a nice home screen. Then you're gonna get an alarm, and it's gonna ask you, has the system been stored with chemicals? And you say, why yes it has, Spectra water maker. Open the pressure relief valve now. So now we open the pressure relief valve, one half turn. Confirm on the analog gauge that we have no pressure. And then we come back to our screen and hit, okay. So the system will count down from 10, and then it'll start running. And it, it, it gives it a 10 minute flush to flush all the chemicals out of the system. Now it says close the perfect pressure relief valve. So now we close the pressure relief valve. This thing can be closed really tight. Hand tight though. Don't use any wrenches or anything on this one. So now when we hit okay, it's gonna pressurize the system and it's gonna purge the system under pressure. So after the purge is over, this is the screen we get. The first thing we need to do is connect to the router, and that's done by 
turning your Wi-Fi on and, and connect to the network name Spectra Connect. As you can see, mine is already connected. Then you need to go to your Spectra Connect display. This is the home screen that'll come up every time you touch the display and disable the screensaver. Where you wanna go is right in the top left corner, there's a little menu button. Click that and then go down to support, clicks on support, and you'll see the device IP right here. In this case, it's 192.168.100.234. So we're gonna come into our browser, in this case I'm using Google Chrome, and we're gonna type that IP address. That brings up the repeated screen on our computer so we can control the water maker from the computer or the phone. So let's go through normal operation. We're gonna press the start button. We're gonna say auto run because fill tank, I don't have tank level switches. If you have tank level switches, you can just hit fill tank and the water maker will run until your tank full switch activates and tells it to turn off. But because I have not disabled that in my settings, I still have that option, but that's not gonna be an option for me. So we're gonna to go to auto run and we're gonna select the amount of water we wanna make. In this case, I want five gallons of water. So I'm gonna enter the amount in gallons, five, submit. So all I do is click on okay, and the system starts up. Okay, so this is the main dashboard. Here you can see the diversion valve status. An X, a red X means it's diverting overboard. Uh, the high and low status of the water maker, the feed pressure, and the filter condition. Now you can see that the diversion valve has opened up and now it's allowing product to go into the tank, fresh water. If we hit the right arrow right here, we get a different screen. And this gives you the quantity in gallons per hour, the quality in parts per million, and the remaining time. If we push the arrow again, we get boost and feed pressures. This is reading out those two red and green sensors on top of the black filters. If we push the right arrow again, this is another pre-filter condition that's taking the average of the two and giving us a percentage of pre-filter life left. If we push the right arrow again, we get to my favorite screen, which gives you everything. Gallons per hour, boost pressure, feed pressure, water quality, water temperature, voltage, and filter condition. All of this is important to see, and I like to keep the water jet controller on this just because it gives me a real-time voltage so I can see exactly what my batteries are doing compared to what my, my solar is doing. And that's it. We're back to the main dashboard. So right now we're making water and the system will automatically stop after five gallons. Okay, the last cool thing about this water maker, the Connect version, is it has an automatic fresh water flush every time you use it. So as soon as you're done making water, it'll go into the freshwater flush mode. Or, if you just want to freshwater flush it for any reason, you have a button here that you can push freshwater flush. When you push that button, it's gonna suck in water through that charcoal filter, and it's gonna flush the water maker for three minutes. And after that three minutes is up, it'll start counting backwards from five days in an auto self-destruct sequence. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I mean auto store sequence. That way you can store it indefinitely without pickling it with the chemicals as long as it keeps flushing every five days. All right guys, that's it. Unboxing the making water in 27 minutes. I got very, very sweaty and I'm gonna wash myself now. I'm super pumped to be an ambassador of Spectra. Watch for more videos about the water maker. I'm gonna do some videos about maintenance, uh, about comparing other water makers, and I'll do an update video to this video in about six months and let you guys know what I think, uh, if any problems arise, how the maintenance is. And how often you have to maintain it, because everybody's always um, complaining about their water makers as being the item that needs the most attention. Yeah. I wonder how it is with this water maker. Yeah. So far we've made about 30 gallons of water and it tastes good and I'm super happy. And it feels good to actually being able to take showers on the boat, huh? Oh man, I'm so dirty. Oh, you stink, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm out. Peace.